Welcome to the 47th annual Seattle International Film Festival. I'm Eve Tovachnik, uh, Senior Programmer of the festival. And uh, welcome to the Ibero Doc Roundtable we have today. We're gonna have an amazing conversation with four fantastic filmmakers from all over the region. So let's go straight into that. And I'm going to start with the director of the Song of the Butterflies coming from Peru, Nuria uh, Frigola Torrent. Hello, welcome Nuria. Um, Hello. Then comes uh, Carolina Ortiz, Ari uh, sorry, Carolina Arias Ortiz from the documentary Rebel Objects coming from Costa Rica. Uh, Selena Escher, Fly So Far, a documentary from El Salvador. And last but not least, Pablo Banchero, uh, director of the documentary Criosho from Uruguay. Welcome all of you. So thrilled to have this uh, opportunity to have this uh, dialogue. Um, and I would like, since you know yourself better than anybody, if you can tell us just a little bit about yourselves, um, you know, where you're um, connecting today, where, um, you know, a little bit of, you know, your background. So uh, the audience uh, who is um, watching right now knows uh, something about you. And I'm going to start uh, with uh, Nuria, since I started with you. Thank you, Jebe. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm uh, in Lima, Peru. Today is an election day. So after this conversation, we'll soon have uh, our future on TV to, and we'll soon know who will be the, the two candidates to the second round. So it's a nervous day today here. I was born in Catalonia, in Spain, uh, but I live in Peru since 2005 and I'm Peruvian now too. And I have a Peruvian son too. Uh, I, I studied audiovisual communication, but I worked for several years in human rights campaigns at Amnesty International and then in organizations also as a campaigner like uh, WWF in uh, environmental subjects. And it was in 2015 that I uh, launched the first film as a producer. It was called, uh, it's called Daughter of the Lake. Uh, it's about uh, environmental conflicts uh, with mining companies. And then I, uh, my, the director of that film, Tito Cabellos, really uh, pushed me to, to work on my own project that finally got the name of The Song of the Butterflies. It, I started to work on that in 2014. And well, I, I hope you, you can watch the film and enjoy it. It's about uh, an Amazonian painter. Fantastic. Let's uh, move to uh, Carolina. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Carolina, and I'm here in Costa Rica. Um, I live here. Um, I arrived in 2015. I was living in Belgium. I grew up there, like in Belgium. I left Costa Rica when I was 12, went to Belgium, and now I came back here five years ago. Um, I study anthropology and then documentary cinema. And I like to, to mix anthropology with cinema and that, that are like my main fields of, of interesting. And Rebel Object is my first feature uh, of documentary, it has a director, so very good experience. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Celine, Selina, sorry, Selina. Uh, yes. Um, hello, everybody. I'm really happy to be here. I am a Salvadorian and Swiss. I lived in both places and uh, I studied uh, first art in uh, Switzerland and then I studied film in Mexico and then I finally studied what I wanted to study, that is documentary uh, direction in the YSTV in Cuba. And uh, there uh, I specialize myself in uh, doing portraits about women and also in their uh, political context, what is really important for me. And then when I finished my studies in 2017, I started the project uh, Fly So Far. 
Um, well, I, I got to know that the, in El Salvador, abortion is banned in any circumstance, and there are women in jail because having a miscarriage and sentenced unjustly for 30 years of prison uh, for aggravated homicide. So I decided to go to the prison in El Salvador, and I visited um, three prisons uh, during these last uh, four years. And I got to know Teodora and the 17, and uh, the film that is now uh, premiering at Seattle is uh, it's about them and and I hope you can all see it and I would uh, I'm looking forward to talk about the film. Excellent. So now Pablo, Pablo Banchero, director of Criollo. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I'm glad to be the only man here. It's good to see that so many women are doing great things. So uh, I, I'm glad to be the only one, you know. I'm from Uruguay. I'm now at, in Uruguay, in Montevideo. Uruguay is a little country between Argentina and Uruguay, and Brazil, sorry. <laughs> and um, I, I've lived all my life here in Uruguay. I've never be, lived abroad. And um, I studied uh, film school here in Uruguay, and I've been, I've, I've been director of photography and editor for some uh, documentaries uh, throughout my career. And this is my first uh, movie. This is my first film, Criollo, which uh, speaks about uh, identity and uh, through, through the, the Uruguayan identity of, uh, of our food and our families and where do we come from, you know, in Uruguay, we mostly are sons and daughters or grandsons or granddaughters for from immigrants from Europe mostly. So that's kind of what happens to us uh, in, in all of our cultural, uh, you know, uh, like experiences. So I'm glad to be here and happy to talk about the movie. Thank you. And uh, before I go to the next question, I just want to remind the audience that they uh, can please use the Q&A portal to submit questions uh, that you will be interested in asking the panelists. We will work to include them, you know, as many as we can throughout this conversation. And also feel free to use the chat to engage respectfully amongst the audience. Um, uh, you can change, um, you know, the, the, the chat settings to panelists or attendees to communicate amongst other um, uh, viewing in the Zoom in the Zoom, but please make sure that um, you are always, like you say, respectful um, with everybody. So I was telling you that um, uh, uh, after reviewing again, the, the four documentaries, it was like, wow, they're so different, but there is something about them that I felt, um, you know, it was like a common thread and it was either the, uh, reconstruction or recuperation of memory, history, and identity, or the construction of memory, history, and identity. In a way, I, I felt like you really work, um, you know, for, in, in uh, of course, on different subjects to make sure that that identity, roots, history um, was, you know, value uh, recuperated. So. Um, you know, that's kind of the way I, I saw how this, uh, all documentaries intersected um, among themselves. So my first question for all of you, and I'm going to start, you know, the other way around, I'm going to start with Pablo is, what was the urge to tell this particular, you know, story? Uh, how was the, 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 the documentary, you know, uh, started? What was the origin of, of the documentary? But the question is going for all of you. Well, um, as I told you just a couple of seconds ago, you know, here we are like uh, uh, sons of do and daughters of immigrants. You know, my mother is Spanish. She is actually Spanish. She's from Catalonia. And, uh, and my father is, his father was Italian, you know, and it, that this happens to everybody here. You know, we are mostly, uh, uh, all of us are sons and daughters or, or grandsons and granddaughters from, for, from immigrants, you know. And so we kind of don't have, uh, uh, an, uh, you know, we, do, we don't have native people here. And uh, 
that shows in in every aspect of our lives you know we don't have, we don't seem to have like an a, a true identity that's only ours and um i've been i've been fond of uh, of food and what food uh brings around you know around the table around uh, i i'm i'm very fond on on cooking and i like cooking for others you know i even had a small restaurant a couple of years ago and um I love cooking for others because I, I love what happens around the table, you know, what you give when you give when you cook for somebody else. And and so once uh, this was like some of a background I had. And um, then I met Hugo, which is the, the main character of, of our film, uh, which is a, a cook here, a, a very renowned chef here because he's a, the first uh, chef that kind of gave an, a, a Uruguayan cuisine identity to his food, you know, to his uh, cuisine. And um, so I met him and, and those two things that seem to be apart, like in the moment, they uh, all three things, you know, identity, the, our background, the, the what happened through kitchen and through cooking and meeting Hugo, you all things, those three things can kind of came together. And, and um, like we, we found that we need to, to check and we, we need to, 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 to dive into Uruguayan cuisine identity, you know, we, have to, we asked ourselves a question if, the, if there was, if there existed uh, this identity or, or if it was like a creation that we think we, th there was and it wasn't or whatever. So we had, we kind of uh, started investigating, and um, and you know uh, Hugo's uh, life story had a lot to do with this, with where he was born. Uh, he was born on the countryside, and he learned a lot from his grandmother and his mother, and uh, being in contact in, with the nature, and uh, that's kind of what what uh, made him the the person he is now, the chef he is now. And so we needed to 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 we wanted to find out if this was kind of if, if there was a, an identity in Uruguay or, or if there wasn't. Everybody said there, it wasn't, you know, and um, that was like you know the 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 birth of the of the project and the, of the movie. And we started investigating, and then we had to we we understood that we had to to. Uh, to, to move along the whole country, which is a small country, you know, but anyway, we had to go uh, through all the country and, uh, you know, ask ourselves and other people well, if this was kind of uh, a true like, hypothesis or, or, or if it was like, you know, a construction of our, of our imagination. Your silence you're muted thank you thank you and I I, I think I I you know uh, the, the the audience will see it but I think you you prove your hypothesis uh, true um, Selena um, can you tell us about the you know the origin I mean you you touch a little bit in your presentation but can you tell us a little bit more about um, you know why this uh, story why now etc um, well, everything started in 2014 or 17. Um, this, uh, I went to the prison in El Salvador uh, to meet the women because I heard about the situation, uh, decriminalization of abortion in El Salvador. And uh, first I got uh, really angry because I said, uh, why, why is this happening? Uh, uh, why are they taking away, you know, all uh, our rights uh, and to decide over our body as Salvadorian women? Uh, so um, I went to the Ilopango prison and I met Teodora and uh, Seventeen. There are the other women who are um, accused uh, of aggravated homicide, but they all had miscarriages. Mm -hmm. And so I met them and... And then all this anger that I had, like of this injustice, uh, transformed into admir admiration to Teodora and how she supports the other women, how she gives them strength, uh, all the sisterhood they have uh, inside jail to also to survive the situation. So then I decided to do uh, this film and I wanted to contribute also to the struggle for them to regain their freedom and also to 
to the struggle uh, for uh, legalizing abortion in El Salvador, which was, uh, it's really a difficult uh, and sensitive topic in El Salvador because uh, El Salvador has really a religious and conservative society. And uh, so this, uh, this started and I, st uh, I visited other prisons, uh, women's prisons. And so I met the other 17. Uh, and so I got to know like how difficult were and the, the conditions inside prison. And so um, we started to do this film with a production company in Sweden, in Stockholm. And, and more and more uh, people and artists came together. Uh, we have musicians and, and animators who are contributing to this, to tell the story. Because also what's important for me that we hear the story, stories of the women so they can uh, tell what's happened to them. Because in the media they, have, they are shown uh, like uh, as murders and really uh, it's a really difficult situation in El Salvador. And so um, this is also a way so we can open a dialogue in El Salvador to talk about this issue and also to, um, to uh, demand uh, the freedom for the 17 and, and also that this something changes because in the, in the constitution and in the penal code, it's uh, not permitted uh, to have an abortion even if your life is in danger, uh, even if you're a 10 year old girl who has been raped, you cannot have uh interrupt you cannot interrupt your pregnancy so um yes so we we started this journey uh, four years ago and 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 now we have finished and and also we are uh, working in an impact campaign because mm. uh, we it's really important that this film uh, goes beyond you know cinema go beyond everything uh, uh, it's for me and for the whole crew it's really important and for the movement also the feminist movement in El Salvador that something real happens mm -hmm. that uh, something changes that the women get liberated so yes this is our goal uh, with the film so somehow you know to so the people get to know all, all this, the situation and the human rights relation that the women are, are living every day in El Salvador so yes, uh, I'm really happy and glad to be in the festival so we can talk about it and, and maybe uh, change it uh, together because I think it's an issue that it's not only about El Salvador, it's also happening in the United States. Uh, and I see really examples like in, in Texas and in Alabama that it's uh, really uh, going back uh, and women, uh, yes, it's really, uh, um, they are taking away women's rights so I think uh, I think together we can do many many things. All right, we we could not agree more, and um, we will talk more about the story itself. But um, it's a really um, a hand wrenching um, uh, reality that uh, it it should get us all you know up in arms to um, go out and defend um, women's rights everywhere, uh, and even defend even more the rights if we already have them. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, so now um, I like to um, ask uh, Carolina, um, you know, you're very personal, but at the same time, um, you know, uh, this sort of almost mystic um, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, with, with these um, stone, uh, <laughs> stone mm -hmm. spheres um, that infuses, um, you know, a sort of otherworldly kind of a feeling to everything that happens. Uh, tell us a little bit about, I mean, you know, if, if you've seen the film, it's it's clear to know how you started the journey, but for maybe for someone who hasn't seen the film, just let it, you know, give us a, 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 a short uh, peek of uh, what it is. Yeah, um, exactly. Well, in, in the film, I use like these uh, archeological objects as metaphors, you know, like to reflect on, on the idea, as you said, of identity and memory, you know, but also personal identity and also collective identity. That was a little bit the um, the work I had to do, you know, how to to get together those those lines. And well, in the beginning, it was not so a uh, personal project, you know, but I let myself uh, to be like influenced by what what I was personal living and in my life and. 
and my interest in as a researcher, you know, also uh, as an anthropologist. And then, well, the, the process was long. We started in 2015 and it was really interesting. It was in fact, a friend of my mother, that she's a writer, uh, she writes poetry. She knew like all my personal process I was going through when I arrived to Costa Rica, like this idea of returning to your childhood territory. That was like a little bit the feeling I had, you know? And like to, um, I had this feeling I need to reconnect with my father, my like personal um, and family story. And then she was like, oh, you know, there is a very interesting archeologist that came back from now from Costa. She was in Spain, so, so she was now in Costa Rica. She studied these beautiful stones, but there was so many information that was, that was lost because they were found when the big banana company was uh, here in Costa Rica. So there was a lot of looting, you know, so they were like, uh, we lost a lot of information. So that is why it's still this mystery, you know, we don't know where they came from, but they are linked to a colonialist story. And that was also very interesting for me. So I, I decided to, to meet this, this girl, this, this archeologist, and I found like this very strong woman well, we don't see her a lot in the documentary because I, I worked something like more poetic with her because she writes a lot and she had like this um, blog where she writes about archeology, span but in a philosophical way. And that was what interested me a lot and like uh, resonaba, like resonates or has like a, a link with what I was feeling, no? Like this emotional weight of, of things and um, and then I start to follow her and in parallel, like living this um, relationship with my father that he, he was, uh, he became ill. So everything was permitted by that also that process, you know, but that being with my, my father that was ill and these stones that are really like abundant. So everything linked very well. And then we had to make a, an important also work of edition, and it was really interesting also to, to rebuild the film when I was in the, in the edition uh, process of post-production also. It's a, a, a process that it was really interesting, and I hope that you will enjoy if you see the film, and <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, that's... <laughs> We, we will go back to, you know, some, uh, you know, specific details, uh, but um, let's um, hear from uh, Nuria um, and your exploration uh, with Rember, the artist from Amazonia um, and that journey that you embark with him. And when I was listening to Carolina, I was thinking that my process, my creative process was a little bit the other way around. Because previously to this film, that it's also my first feature film, I think for all of us, it's the first feature. Uh, I did a short film about identity and memory, uh, auto autobiographic. Mm -hmm. And in the Song of the Butterflies, it's not, um, on what you see on the screen, it's, it's not autobiographic. It's a story of someone who is completely different to me. It's a man from the Amazonia indigenous but the way uh, the story uh, like discovers you and you discover how to narrate it, it's similar. In this case, it was the other way around. Every time I was less in the documentary. Uh, but the interest in identity and memory, I think it's from, from uh, all my life because as being a, um, being a Catalan makes you normally very conscious about identity for the good and for the worst, because there is, there's a conflict there too about identity and what identity is the real one and all these things, but it's another subject. But when I arrived to Peru, I was amazed about the diversity of the, the, the cultural diversity of the country. Uh, there are 52 indigenous nations, living cultures. Uh, may, most of them are in the Amazonia. Uh, the most famous ones are the Andes ones, uh, like Quichua, Aymara, but in the Amazonia there are people, uh, nations that has like less than 100 inhabitants. That shocked me and interested me a lot. Uh, first, uh, academically, and actually I started to get in touch with the Amazonia in a research that was not um, artistic research, 
But when I decided to start the, the film for other reasons and for other um, objectives, I started to do a freer research. I don't know how you were, but for me, it was like having a coffee or having a drink with different characters and people who could be interested. And when I met uh, Rember Yaguarcani, who is the main character of the film, a painter, an indigenous painter from the Witoto nation, almost extinguished, it's terrible, but um, he told me we were having a, a coffee because he's indigenous, but he lives in the city and goes back and forward uh, to his community. He told me something I asked him, I was asking that to the different people I was um, getting to know. Uh, what was to be a good Witoto? What made you good in your identity? And he answered me something that kept, kept uh, as you said, Carolina, I don't know if resonating, I don't know if it exists in English. Okay. He said, my grandmother told me a good Witoto is someone who knows his own story or his own history and knows how to share it with others. And that's uh, it took some months, maybe even a couple of years, that he became the main character and his family and his grandmother is actually, his vo her voice is in the film, although she's dead. And she was dead when, when I met Rember, but we had the archive. Um, I think this is in the spirit of the film, The Song of the Butterflies. The grandmother telling, being a good widow is knowing who you are and sharing it. So that's the way I... I not, it was not a straight way, but how it, uh, the film appeared. Um, I, I, I love yeah. it. I love it because um, one of, you know, my, my next question, and, and I have a question from, from the audience. So we're going to, I'm going to ask that question and then go back to, you know, talking a little bit more about the making of the films. So, um, you know, the, the question is from uh, Urania Perez, uh, and she says, did the pandemic and our movement or of Black Lives Matter affected in any way your documentary? And I think this is for all of us. I think it's really more the pandemic, um, you know, in, in, in most of your cases. Um, did the pandemic affect it, um, uh, affect the, the, the making of the films, um, the post-production? Whoever wants to jump in, just uh, mute. In, in our case, I'm, I'm going to take the, the <laughs> I'm going to be the first one. I'm going to break the ice. In, in our case, the only, the only uh, thing that affected us is that when we finished the movie and wanted to premiere it, we had our, our theaters closed. That's the only thing because we, we finished uh, shooting and post-production was uh, already finished also by when we started with the pandemic here but what we what did what did happen is that we couldn't exhibit it the way we wanted he, uh, here in Uruguay so we had even had more uh, exhibition outside from Uruguay than here here it's almost unseen the movie you know it, it, you just had a couple of of uh, of um, premieres and that was it hmm. Anyone else, you know, had any? Uh... Well, in our case, the film is a co-production with Colombia and we had to do the sound mix, the final mm -hmm. sound mix in Colombia, but we couldn't do it. We had to do it like ritual. <laughs> so, but it's okay. We could done it. Mm -hmm. So that's the important. So it, it didn't affect um, us as much. Okay, so um, I'd like to move on. Oh, yeah, sorry, Nuria. Uh, just a short, it's the same. It was mainly distribution. And in Peru, I, um, I, we've gone online, everything, but to show this film in the indigenous territories where it has been filmed, it's something I really want to keep, even it's in 2025, because <laughs> I really want to deliver the film to the yeah. communities. And it's very sad for me not having been able for that. And another thing, it's indirectly affected, but some characters of the film, both uh, indigenous territories uh, where it was filmed in Peru and Colombia, were very affected by the um, coronavirus. And some characters of the film ha have died. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, and I haven't been able to share with them. So this kind of affection. 
Yeah, it's it's one of the um, biggest uh, impacts uh, in terms of uh, communities is indigenous communities all over the world are suffering, uh, especially the COVID, um, um, you know, illnesses and, and death. That's you know, it's a it's a sort of a um, hidden genocide, you know, I, in a way because they are most affected. Moving a little bit on 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 to the you know making of the films. Um, one of the other things that uh, is really striking about all of you uh, and the films that you're showing is the choices that you made. For example, in the case of, um, of Carolina, uh, interesting enough, uh, present for you is in black and white and uh, past is in color, which, you know, it's something like, well, okay, let's talk a little bit about, about that. Um, Nuria, the way you know you you chose sometimes to you know you put your words on on screen, um, you know the 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 the, the almost fleeting um, use of some of the archive photos where you know they're there but they're all like ghostly. Um, you know, Selena, you know, of course, is, yours is more direct, but still, you know, um, you know, if you can tell us a little bit more about how you decided, you know, the 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 uh, aesthetic uh, presence of, of uh, your film. And the same thing with, with you, Pablo, you know, because you, you know, sometimes you are more with your main character, but many of the events are just, you know, capturing like the communal um, joy of, of enjoying a, a meal together. Um, so, you know, I'm going to go with, let's say, um, uh, let's start with Carolina since, um, you know, just changing a little bit. <laughs> uh, can you tell us about those those choices? Um, you know, the, the combination of, of course, your archival footage, but this particular choice of, um, you know, black and white for present, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which was uh, very interesting. <laughs> well, um, when I was starting, like uh, following this archeologist, I also worked in um, like this, in the beginning of the film, you see these women like trying to build pieces, mm. um, broken pieces of ceramic. And I did a voluntary uh, like uh, work there with, with those uh, researchers. And I was like every day doing the same work and working the, with these uh, old things. And I felt like, wow, this, these people like live in, in the past, you know? Like I, I felt like they are all the time thinking about the past. So. I was like thinking about how to tell that that uh, time, you know, in a like in aesthetic um, way, and also the past is in a in a way more alive to them mm -hmm. also, you know. So I was like, I want to to play with that, and I I I I, I thought like, well, the present could be like in this black and white and and like to have like this sensation of time that you don't know very much, you know, but I don't give any like archeological uh, um, information or, or, you know, it's like really more poetic. And then when I start looking with the archive and my family archive images, um, I felt also that that kind of idea that they are more alive, you know, that past is like more present, <laughs> you know, this kind of, of, of game you can do with, with those words. So also another thing, it was the, the director of photography I worked with. Um, he's, he really worked really good with black and white. Mm -hmm. And when we start working together, I, I knew also that he has this sensitive uh, look to, to look at, at, at the things in black and white. You know, it's, it, it, he had like those skills also. And um, I was also interested, like, you know, normal, this tropical um, vision of our countries. And um, it was for me interesting also to see those exotism, like mm -hmm. uh, places, but without color, you know, to put attention in another layers of the, of the reality. So, and and uh, one more question is, uh, some of the old photographs uh, 
were those in the color you show in the film? Because sometimes they, they look like they were colorized, but I that was maybe my my feeling. Yeah, that exactly. Some of them were somehow the uh, one, yeah, a little bit, but because we want that that idea to to bring to life, like this. But I, okay, it, but it's it's very interesting this idea of you know the past being more alive and mm -hmm. and more you know, of course you know. Um, attached to a, a particular time and, and present in, in this black and white is more like, okay, there's no time, you know, before and after. Exactly. Uh, oops, yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> um, so, Selena, uh, tell us a little bit about your process of, of shooting your film, um, you know, the access, because of course you're, you know, some of the, of the, of the shots are in the, in the prison and, and how, you know, Easier or or not, or you know the 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 getting you know intimate with um, Teodora and 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 her struggle. Um, well, at the beginning, it was really difficult to get access uh, into the jail to film in that prison. So it takes like a, a process to get the permits. You, you have to wait like two weeks to get a permit. And then when I, you enter the prison, uh, you have like, a, you gave before your list of all the, the equipment that you're bringing in. So the guards are checking every little thing, every lens, every battery, everything. Um, so it's then you get lab body search and and then you enter into prison and there is always a guard that was watching me. Um, so at the beginning is uh, yeah it's a yeah it was really a, a difficult situation also to film uh, inside prison and also that the women um, they feel comfortable to talk about the, what happened to them in front of the camera. So I went many many times into the prison also at uh, the beginning I uh, was just uh, talking to them or just recording the workshop they were taking there and so I waited for the main interview uh, for, uh, for a while and then I waited for uh, one and a half year to get access to the dorms um, so the images that you can see uh, where they sleep and how they have their daily life I had to wait uh, for quite a long time and and yes did you, and did you have did you have to disclose to the authorities sort of the angle of your documentary because you know um going you know maybe a bit you know um further along in the conversation but I, you know it definitely it's 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 a controversial uh, uh subject um so um uh, how was yes. that? Yes, they knew that I was doing a film about the 17. Of course, they didn't know how I will do the film, but they knew that I wanted to interview them because I always had to ask mm. for them to visit them. So it's it was clear uh, that they were the, the main characters, the focus of, of the film. And during these four years, we also collaborated with other um, photographers. So in total, we were like eight photographers. So that was a, a challenge also to, you know, to edit uh, the film, so to have the same look. And, and uh, yes, uh, from one side, um, we are following Teodora through her process to becoming a women's rights activist. And on the other side, also, we are portraying the Salvadorian women, um, how they live, because also people don't know how El Salvador looks like. Um, so also was for me was really important that we see how the women uh, are, uh, how they live in, in the market also, because uh, what I have to say is that this law only affects women who live, who live in poverty. This uh, criminalization of abortion doesn't affect women who have uh, money and in the upper class. So this is why it was important for me to portray these women uh, so we get to know um, how they live and and so we understand also like the daily life for the women that uh, yes they sell their fruits and, and vegetables in the market so this was really important for me because it's also an homage for them mm. and and then the other side we worked with the animators uh, who also uh, like in a way recreated the situation the past what happened to the women 
Uh, this is all based on their testimonies and I wanted to make it uh, black and white and, and as uh, with the technique of uh, watercolors or oil colors. Um, this was uh, my, my first idea. And so only the blood that is red and, and the blue from the police is, are the only colors that we see uh, in the animations. And then during the process also was for me important to portray in a way how Teodora, not only she regains her freedom, but also she encounters again her son who waited for her for 11 years. But then also she has to like re-find herself uh, outside prison because she lived there 11 years in prison and she uh, made this uh, new family inside prison with these other women. But then she also had to, you know, uh, go outside and find herself outside prison uh, and go back to her community in Takuba. So also that was important for me, her reconnection with herself. Mm. Um, because she's not only an activist or a mother, but she also has to find herself. So this is why the journey, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, quite long also when she goes back and, and also she, in that moment when she when she's outside prison, she didn't uh, recognize her own family, uh, her sisters, and so this is another process that she has to take. So for me, it was also that like uh, um, important uh, to portray this this whole journey and this whole process. Um, and 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 yes, during this alt during the time in in the prison, many things happened. Um, I also in the film we, we see different prisons. Um, there are really in different uh, difficult conditions. Like uh, for example, we have the Ilopango prison, but we also have the San Miguel prison. That it's a uh, really really overcrowded and really there's a, a lack of water and 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 they uh, uh, yes they have. Uh, they have to survive uh, this, this situation. So also that was really important for me to that the audience understand like these women are unjustly there, but they also have to survive these terrible, terrible conditions. So this is what we tried and, and, and to do and, and also to give like a, to, to show also like how, how the Salvadorian culture is because mm -hmm. it's also not uh, well known and lots of people don't know where even El Salvador is. So it was important that we know what do we eat and how does it look like and you know that that was also part of the aesthetic. Which which I think is one of the other threads uh, about all of your documentaries because somehow um, we actually get um, a very unusual unique uh, view on people and communities and and on and, and parts of the world that maybe we heard about it but we we haven't really you know, known and uh, in each of you really reveal, um, you know, either, you know, a, a story or a reality that we haven't seen before, which, you know, it, it makes them also, you know, poignant and, and, and timely. Um, I'm going to move to uh, Nuria. Nuria, tell us uh, a little bit about, um, you know, your, your choices and in, in terms of, you know, uh, like I said, the, the use of uh, especially, you know, I, I, I was taken again by this, you know, how you, you, you will put, you know, this archive uh, photos almost like, like ghosts um, on the image. Um, the artistic uh, choices or um, the matters of form were actually discovered in the editing room together with my creative mate, uh, Nicole Cespedes, the, the editor. It was not something that I had in my mind before shooting. It didn't happen like that. And especially because I shot half of the film, we start editing and it was for financial problems, but it was good for the film. Uh, some advisors al always told me if uh, time is always good for a documentary. So. Uh, we edit and then we uh, did the, the rest of the shooting. So it um, permitted to uh, the artistic choices to give them con continuity, then looking um, when we were shooting, like chasing what we needed. But it was not everything clear from the beginning. 
in particular the use of the photos i um th those photos uh i had seen them years before and shocked me a lot because if for, for the people i suppose most of the people has not seen the watch the film but those are some photos that were taken by a company that extracted rubber from the amazonia and that enslaved uh, thousands of indigenous it was a genocide but those photos were taken like some kind of PR. It, they are from 1919. Uh, 19, 19, yeah, okay. So there were not the concept of PR, but they were like taken by the company. Mm -hmm. But they are so um, uh, reveladoras, re uh, revealing. Uh, because you can see like white men. Uh, standing um, with hats like col the colonial archetype and the indigenous uh, so they were very shocking but the way to use them actually when we were playing with Nicolet to use them in uh, uh, in a moment we had a sort of accident with the dissolvents mm. and we liked it I liked it so it appeared because we had the word like I, I work with keywords normally and I, we had the, the, the idea of evocation of the past. We are not talking about like what happened historically, but it's like the past is there, especially because uh, the Rember and the indigenous community that uh, is their story, they don't want it to be their identity. It's something that happened to them, but they are much more, they are survivors. So do this is part of the story of the past that I as uh, I wanted to like uh, make a denounce was not what they wanted. So um, it was an evocation and we I think um, that's the way we um, it's told like that and then we played a lot with the idea of evocation with sound design. And the other thing is the, that you mentioned Hebe is there are uh, words of um, in Munuka language, that it's almost extinguished. It's the Witoto uh, language variant of this uh, clan uh, that are from the grandmother of the main character who died in 2012. Uh, but uh, I had like pre translations and they were so poetic that uh, actually that's uh, how I decided to put them like poems actually on the screen, not subtitles, like poems that appear, but we work with some kind of um, preliminary translations mm -hmm. and they appear like, I don't remember exactly if it's five or six times, sometimes they are even songs. They are, were uh, approximate translations, but when we had the whole film finished and we went to a translator, it's not easy to have a Munuka translator, so we had to find the person in Colombia who could translate it. Magically, those poems were even more beautiful and more exact for the film than I, what I suspected. Wow. We know more or less what, what that was about, because in some cases we used like archive interviews that were translated by someone like uh, blah, 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 blah. She saying that, so we were really approximate mm. and they were better at the end. And my, my skin is like <laughs> that because as we are all the time in the film and in the editing room, like evoking uh, grandmother Marta and the people who were killed to, to be, we, we are a little bit hippie, like saying we will be the channel to tell your story. And it was like they really um, appeared in the film, uh, giving us the the poetry. And and um, uh, before I move to to Pablo, um, how um, difficult or easy was to actually uh, get uh, the okay to uh, shoot in the Chorero in Chorero um, community? Because you know you can see that you know it's it's not a place where you know they will have a lot of you know outsiders. And, no. and even more so because they are um, receiving, welcoming, you know, someone they haven't seen for many years. So there is something uh, very a special, intimate going on at the moment where uh, uh, Rember uh, goes to visit them and to, you know, connect again with his roots. So what was your conversation with the elders of that community? Um, first of all, it was key that we find uh, after months of months of finding the way to reach to La Chorrera because it's in the mid, in, it's in the Colombian jungle currently. It was Peru 100 years ago, but we had it's not easy to reach there physically. We had to take 
one plane, one a small avioneta, a small plane. Yes, small plane, um, yeah. yes it's difficult to reach there. Uh, and the producer that uh, we found, it's Fanny Kuru, uh, that is from La Chorrera, from the same clan than the main character. And she's a lawyer, she lives in Bogota, so she was someone who could understand what we were looking in a production that we could not stay there like three months. We had to be there in a shooting for certain days, but she was one of them. It was key. Yeah. If not, we wouldn't have uh, been able to do that. But apart from that, I arrived with Fanny to the community asking for permission, but I was asking for permission, but we had the plane tickets for the rest of the crew and, and remember to come like 10 days after. So the, the answer had to be yes, because if not, we had a huge problem for the film or for the production. And it was, uh, we followed all the respect, uh, um, the respectful rules with the community. So going to the elderly, to Manuel Safiama, uh, to the different kind of um, authorities, indigenous authorities and like administrative authorities. And uh, I was really, I had to show the teaser and ask my intentions and they were debating for hours and I couldn't understand anything. And finally they said, yes. But when Rember arrived, for people in Colombia, what happened that was a genocide, as the company I mentioned before was uh, Peruvian with British capitals, British money, but for them, like the mean people, the ones that enslaved with Totos were the Peru Peruvians. So wow. even Rember, that is indigenous, it's, it's a sort of, um, it was a sort of forced eviction. So they are uh, people that was displaced. It represents you know, the, the, the colonialism and, and, and uh, you know, the s slavery. I mean, it, it, even yes, though- but for, not for Colombia, he was indigenous, but he was the Peruvian. So, uh, uh, and he had to sort of prove also to do a second process of um, acceptance uh, to show them that he was one of them, that he was the grandson of one of them. There was a debate. Now I t I'm telling this very, um, count but it was it put me very nervous because i was th thinking maybe we cannot shoot because if they decide we don't have the right of course we will just leave but uh they decided we could shoot and that they will uh, go deeper in the jungle uh, to the community that he was from because there's always a deeper and a more more precise identity so he, he was not only with Toto, not with Toto Munuka, but from the White Heron clan. So we went deeper and there, their relatives um, received him and we were able to shoot it, but it was, well, I mean, we had to shoot it like um, Selena in this case. It was the first time we, we could not do many mise en scene for that. And when we uh, finished filming that scene, the photographer and I, we were only funny and photographer sound and me myself we were feeling like that we had that that it hadn't worked we were thinking it was not good what we had because it had been so rushed but then it's uh one of my favorite scenes of the film i don't know why we were feeling that it was a disaster because we couldn't prepare it was uh, crazy but we had the opportunity to be there in a very intimate reception of um of someone who goes back to to his roots wow um, and, 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 you know, one thing that I, I don't want to forget, and I'm, I'm going to move to you, Pablo, but it's this um, whole idea of, of, of how the uh, explo exploitation of, you know, the local resources also is present, um, you know, of course, throughout Latin America, but in the case of, um, of Costa Rica with uh, the banana, banana uh, planters and plantations and the um, exploitation of rubber. Uh, in um, so I like to go back to that uh, um, a little bit later, but let's go to uh, the delicious <laughs> uh, criollo uh, and and uh, your rescue of that uh, identity uh, because it's true that you know Uruguay suffers a little bit the fact that it is you know uh, between the two, two giants big <laughs> countries uh, that have. I have to say, Brazil probably has a bigger, bigger ego in that respect. You know, they are the 
uh, más grande del mundo, that's what they always say, uh, but Argentinians uh, were not uh, going, you know, behind that. So, uh, and so that's one of the reasons, um, you know, your documentary is uh, so uh, also timely because a lot of people don't know much about Uruguay and mm -hmm. through food, you actually show us a whole aspect of your country. So um, tell us a little bit more about your, your choices. Well, um, as I told you, I, 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 I've been a director of photography before for some documentaries. First, in my career, I've been, first of all, I've been a, an editor, you know, and afterwards I've been, I, I entered the documentary, uh, you know, like uh, a genre, like throughout editing and director of photo, as a director of photography. So kind of image is, is kind of uh, I, I'm driven by image you know I, I'm very uh, I put a lot of thinking in, in, in image and in aesthetics and in how we show and we shoot what we are going to shoot I, I work with a crew which is almost the same for it's been almost the same for a long uh, a long time so we we work together in a in a very you know in a very easy way we know each other and we we so we know what decisions we need to take before and for this this film we 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 took some technical decisions that uh were all tending to have like a, a, we wanted to have a a bright uh, colorful movie you know we wanted to show like the the classical beauty it has the movie has, has like a like a like a very classical uh, narrative, you know. We got en interviews, we got a lot of images uh, that cover the the interviews that explain the images explain what the interviews are telling us. So we, we weren't like you know breaking any any um, you know yeah. new language or whatever. We were very, uh, pretty classical in that way, but um, we wanted you know to to have like a. A very this a very bright and colorful uh, movie. We wanted to show things in a very beautiful way. We de decided to shoot between uh, autumn, winter, and spring. You know, so we didn't. We wanted certain hours of time. We wanted uh, the sun to be in certain angle, and we work a lot in photography in this in this aspect, and. Um, we, because we want, we, we always try to work with you know with natural light, natural uh, scenes. We don't like make any uh, you know uh, uh, miss and send. You know, you know we don't uh, work around anything. We just arrive and work with what we got there. We try to spend some time with our with our characters, with our uh, with, with the people we are working with because we want to to you know build a certain trust even we if we don't in this case we, we haven't uh, spent a lot of time with all our characters but the time we spend with them we try to build some trust we tell, try to them to feel like uh, they are part of the of the film that we are part of them so they show themselves uh, the way they are uh, every day and uh, and we know like how to work with uh, with uh, natural light and with uh, scenes that are part of the real life and uh, to make them look like you know like to bring out the beauty of, of those of those scenes and so uh, that's kind of what what we looked for we looked for uh, this kind of look and uh, you know if you see the movie you've, you'll see lots of slow motion shots you know we wanted to to work with uh, like appetite you know and uh, we wanted to you to to feel like hungry after you see the movie so uh, even even if some other stuff you know comes to comes around obviously one of uh, our best or maybe the best critic we have for the for the film said that this was a film about love and i absolutely loved that uh, comment you know and because uh, it's when you see that things uh, appear after 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 the first sight you know after the first thing, first things you see that you see this beauty and colorful and whatever and you see what's coming on the other layers behind that so uh, that was kind of kind of cool and um, 
I mean, that's it. We work a lot with with uh, with the look of the film. We work work a lot with uh, with the editing. As I told you, I'm I'm also an, an editor. So I, even if this the film was edited but by someone else, I couldn't stand grabbing the final cut and maybe making some of some final adjustments. Um, but uh, anyway, that's kind of what, what how we we work with with our team with our crew. I, I, and again, I agree completely with this assessment because uh, when you see the film uh, for whoever hasn't seen it yet, um, that's really what you get out of you know you know the whole story. And 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 the other thing is, you know is love. It's um, you know the the sense of family and 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 community, especially community when when you know mm -hmm. people from different places just just get together and and share a meal. And also the joy of eating, which we live in a society today where, you know, eating is, you know, equated to many things and not so many times with just the pleasure of even um, just the talking. There is a, a line at some point where somebody says something like, I don't want the, the food to be ready because this, you know, just the conversation makes it, especially in the, and the barbecues in the South, uh, you know, of the, of the continent, you know, you, you can, start a, a barbecue at i don't know at noon and you know ends i don't know midnight um, maybe or, or the other day even. Or, the, or, or the next day, <laughs> or the next so day. that's that's uh you know so uh, again uh definitely love is 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 one word um a couple of questions uh we still have um, a little bit of time i want to remind the audience uh that is watching this um round table that you can pause questions to either all the panelists or you know uh, any one of them in particular. So please um, use uh, either the chat or the Q&A um, uh, window to put your questions there. Um, can we touch really briefly, just you know, like a like a, a couple of you know sentences about um, the funding? Because uh, I know also a lot of the audience that we have might be you know even um, you know. Uh, young filmmakers, uh, upcoming filmmakers. And, um, you know, again, because you're so different and of course, you know, you you have the, maybe the advantage of, you know, being from some place and living in another one and having already, you know, connections with Europe, which, you know, in, in, in funding helps. Can you give us just a little, you know, like a very short journey of, you know, how did you make uh, the, the film happen? Um, uh, and you know, I'll I'll start with Selena and, and 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 move around super quickly so we can move to a different topic. Uh, well, we were really lucky uh, because I'm working with this uh, Swedish uh, film company uh, here in Stockholm, Prom Film. So we applied to the Swedish Film Institute as SFE, and uh, they were the main uh, funders, and also the Itfa Berta Fund. And, and there were also other uh, uh, fundings from uh, Sweden, from Stockholm. So yes, this, this were, uh, we were really lucky to have the support. And in fact, the film ended up having the premiere at IDFA, that's correct. No, the, the international premiere is with you, <laughs> with Seattle. Wow. Um, yes, I... we had the premiere in Tempo, that's just a Swedish premiere, and then uh, we're in Seattle. We just started this year with our... I don't know why I thought it was... Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> even even better. So, okay. Um, and, and, and before I leave uh, you, and, and did you have to go through more of like, you know, working progress or labs or, you know, other uh, instances to ready the material um, that you, you were working on? And, and because you work like five, no, 2014, you said? You uh, 2017. 17. So, okay, so four years. So did you do anything uh, like, you know, labs or work in progress for your films? Um, well, we had work in progress, um, but we worked with rough cut services for the process of editing because the process of editing took like one and a half year. 
because we had so much material and we, yes, we had also different kinds of editors. Actually, I had, I had three editors during the process. And, but then finally, uh, one uh, editor from my school, the YSETV, he traveled during the pandemic from Cuba to Stockholm so we could finish the film uh, in last summer. So yes, then we uh, had this, uh, they gave us advices, uh, rough cut services, they're really good. Uh, yes, this is what we did and with different pitches, but uh, yes. Cool. Um, Carolina, what about you? What was your journey to make Well, our, our journey was long a little bit, but I think it was important for the process. We were like in a very interesting development program that is called Campus Latino. And this development uh, like space give us a lot of tools and, and like different ways to, to think the project and to build like a good and like um, folder or project, you know, to present to different funds. And so we participate in the national fund here in Costa Rica. There is one fund that is not so big, but is we have one, so it, that's cool and <laughs> that's good. So. We participate there and we won this national fund of cinema, but it's really small. So we start working with that. And then we participate in the Ibermedia fund with this co-production um, way of, of working with this fund. And in this development stage, um, we like connect with a lot of people from Latin America in this like Campus Latino, uh, thing that I, I was explaining to you. and then there we find like another uh, Colombian co-producer and they said like hey we were working together our projects why we don't collaborate and then we went to Ibermedia to do this co-production and we um, finished the, the film with this fund so and, and Campo Latino is in Costa Rica. Um, uh, is that really interesting initiative because they are from Spain, um, Germany. This this producer Bettina Walter, she's like the head director of this development uh, stage uh, project, and they support films from um, Spain and also all Latin America. So if you're interested, they, they there has been only two or three. Of, of this kind of, but it's really good because it's like for a year that they go with you, with your project and you go to different festivals where you can pitch your project. It's, it's really, really good. I, it's like one year you're like working a lot. So, and then you have like a more solid project. So you feel like more, you trust more, I think in, in, in you and in your film to present to, to different funds and and they were based in in, uh, um, in in Germany or? Well, she's German, but she, she lives in Spain. So she works with people from Europe, like, and then they connect with all, all Latin America. And it also is also a, an initiative of the GUT Institute mm. because the GUT Institute has a lot of offices in Latin America. So they, they are now working on, on film and that's good for, for this part of the world. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, Nuria, how about you? What was your journey? <laughs> the financial journey started uh, with uh, a national fund in Peru from DAFO, uh, the, from uh, like the uh, cinema, cinema fund from the uh, part of the Ministry of Culture. And then the other big fund was from Ford Foundation not through the just films um, way, but through indigenous um, area. And then I had plenty of like micro funding, plenty, not plenty, like four or five, uh, like um, academic ones. Mm. Uh, an important one was from the Center of National Research of Social, Social Science in France and others in, in Peru, like 3000 euros, but in this kind of small productions, they can be key. And then uh, uh, at the middle of the process, we, ha uh, we enter into co-production with lamula.pe. That is a Peruvian uh, um, 
port web portal of alternative uh, journalism, of uh, citizen journalism. It's like a block of blocks. And they also do cinema. And they offered me, finally, they put some money, some cash, but they offered me uh, the editor and the editing room with no limit. Wow. So it was very good, but I was working with another editor. So it had to be their editor because it, and we fall, fell in love with Nicolet and we are currently working together. I, I, I got her to another company. So we, we are really, uh, and they also offered me something key that is a senior advisor from Javier Corcuera. It's a Peruvian Spanish senior filmmaker that advised the editing process. And, and I'm, so, so I noticed that you had uh, in one of the team uh, members is Alvaro Aparicio, is the director of... Uh, mm, Alvaro Aparicio, Alvaro the the from Retablo. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes, yes. The, he did the, the Follies. Uh, he, you know, the, the director of el, el, el Retablo. No, it's not the same person. Oh, it's not the same. I thought I it mean, was because it was Alvaro Delgado Aparicio ah, and Alvaro Delgado. Aparicio. That's what I was saying. I was saying maybe it's uh, some relative to you, you know, that <laughs> the police were was, very good. He was part of the of the of the team. No, uh, he was not. And finally, I wanted to say that in my current job at Teatro La Plaza, I work for a, a drama and on stage um, company. They sort of, uh, uh, when they contracted me uh, and they knew I was editing a film in the mornings and they accepted anyway to contract me just working in the afternoon was yeah. in a way financing the film because they were financing my salary, that I, which I need. <laughs> wow, good. Kudos for that company. Great. Uh, Selena, what was your journey? Uh, I I told about the the SFE the Swedish Film Institute. Oh, sorry, uh, I I. It's me that's missing. So, suddenly, I yeah. had a, 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 a moment. It was it was you, Pablo, that I. No I... Yes. Uh, we had we we had uh, some luck too, you know, because we made like a small crowdfunding from from some friends, and uh, we got like a, a start uh, budget with some friends that. Uh, Put some cash for for our film, and then after we began the the process of the of shooting, we got some sponsorship from the Ministry of Agriculture here in Uruguay and the Wine Institute here in Uruguay, and uh, it, since it's like a, a small budget, that was like kind of what it ended being the our covering our our whole budget. The good thing is. We didn't have to spend for for uh, money in food, you know, because everywhere we went, we had people serving us uh, food, and, uh, and that was I, kind of cool. I was going to ask if you, you know, if you gain a little bit of weight uh, yeah, while doing this documentary, because so many, you know, barbecues and and stools, and you know, the... you, you couldn't believe we we even brought corn, bags of corn from Tacuarembó, which is like 600 kilometers away because they gave us corn and we came to our houses and the whole crew after the, the, that uh, uh, shooting days, we were with our kids, you know, uh, peeling the whole corn and it was, it's not only what happens when you shoot, but what happens afterward, you know? Awesome. And well, um, you know, of course now is the time where, you know, we, we have the film and we heard a little bit about what, you know, what's going on because of the pandemic, but uh, what's the future of the films in your respective countries and also, you know, your plans or, you know, I know, like in the case of Selena, you have, you know, this impact campaign for your film, but what, what's the status of your film in relation with you know, connecting with the uh, audiences in your own countries, but also, you know, um, going some other places. Maybe, you know, if you have any distribution, um, you know, news that you can share um, with us. And also, because this is always a great opportunity, you never know who's listening, if you have uh, new projects in your bags. 
um, this is the time to say, hey, if you like my film and you want, you know, maybe support my next one. So, um, and uh, let's start with Nuria. Thank you. Um, the film is um, uh, starting the second year. Mm -hmm. So we still haven't been able to uh, launch it in Europe. I would love to have an opportunity to show it in my other land, in Catalonia and Spain. Uh, in the US, uh, it will be this year at some point available very widely. I still cannot say the way, but it's a good opportunity for the film. As I said, I really want to show it in Peru and Colombia. I, I dream about uh, local distribution together with workshops, but uh, it's difficult to know how and when exactly. I would love to do a sort of caravan in the communities that it has been uh, shot. Um, because when we were shooting, I was always saying, if just one people, uh, a young kid, uh, watches the film where normally you cannot see uh, indigenous communities represented there. An indigenous kid watches the film and goes back home and asks his grandmother or grandfather, where do we come from, who we are, what is our nation? I feel like all the efforts goes um, paid. Right. And I have an, a project that is in every stage of development. Uh, together with my uh, with uh, the son of my uh, husband, uh, uh, an older son who is 20 years old. He's a TikToker. He he's an actor. He has a, a Down syndrome, and uh, he dreams about doing his first film. And we are in co-direction on that. So the project is, uh, and it's a family film because uh, uh, his father, my husband is a film producer. So we will work it together and we are developing um, because I, I will be uh, helping him to show his wonderful and um, how do you say in, in English, delirante? Delirious. Delirious. Delirious and also profoundly wise mind uh, in the film he, he's dreaming about. Um, before I leave you, um, uh, have you thought about doing like a road show with an exhibition of the, the, the arts of, of, of Rembert and uh, his father, his mom's um, masks? Because, you know, they are so- It could be great. In Lima and actually in a, in, a, in a place in Germany, they were interested to do something like that, but uh, it is still not, because all of these kind of things are difficult in the midst of the pandemic. But yeah. I, I would love to have something like, uh, because it's like uh, naturally uh, transmedia, because mm -hmm. it's a family of artists, so it should be the exhibition and the film and uh, other things. But we, and, we will wait. And, <laughs> and we can see one of Rembert's uh, drawings uh, on your back, which is yes. beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love uh, his words too. Yes. And this uh, is in, on Lanchama. It's, it's not a uh, canvas. It's a natural uh, bark of tree. Wow. It's very, I'm always worried that if polillas, uh, the um, mm. mists, mist? Yes. Mist go there and I don't know how to make it not to have it eaten. Because it's completely a, a separate conversation. We'll do um, conservation <laughs> of uh, you know uh, art. Yes. Of art. Um, um, Pablo, what about you? I mean, we know that the film hasn't been really shown in Uruguay, but what are a little bit your plans uh, for this film and for the future? Well, luckily uh, we we had a, a nice exhibition and in Malaga in the in the festival in Malaga and we got a, a mention there at the Cinema Casino that was a, a very very good news and uh, we have distribution we're trying to get distribution all over the world but in Uruguay our plans were and are still are for the time we can make them. You know, now in Uruguay, we are in the worst moment of the pandemic. Uh, we were very well, and now we're in the worst moment. So we are still waiting we, if, when, for when we can do it. We, we have uh, like an association with Ecocinema, which is a platform. I don't know if you know them. There are uh, some, some places in Latin America. It's a platform that they uh, show around the films uh, with a, they go with a van that has 
uh, solar chargers, solar panels that charge batteries, and they put uh, the cinema, you know, the, uh, and, uh, uh, screen, an infla inflated screen anywhere. And they exhibit uh, the movies for free for communities and whatever. So our plan was and still is, sometime we will make it to make the movie uh, go around Uruguay in that, with, that, uh, with that platform. So it would be very nice for, for we want to, to take it outside from Montevideo. You know, the capital here has half of the, of the population. So everything happens here and nothing happens on the rest of, of the country. So we want to take the movie for, to the rest of the country, which are so they are so much of a character in, in the movie. So that's our, our plan for, for, for our distribution here. And uh, we have some other projects. We are finishing editing a movie, a film about a documentary about uh, um, oncologic patients which are which participate in clinical trials you know clinical trials are the way uh, medications and vaccines are are uh, tried and tested so that's a film we are finishing now and we are starting a, a documentary series of, of like uh, animal ser documentary series with uh, 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 our character main character is a, a kid who is 21, who is uh, Asperger, you know, the syndrome, he's uh, one who has uh, the syndrome, the Asperger syndrome. And the particularity of, the, of, this, uh, of this documentary series is that it's all made and supported by a lot of um, science that tell us how to make this content uh, able for people with uh, the, the disorders, the autistic disorders, uh, that they could see it and they could, uh, you know, um, enjoy it, you know, make entertainment for everybody. That's the news we have for, well, uh, for the future. Before, uh, one thing I can say is that you can take the van to Argentina, Brazil and Paraguay and Chile. I think there will be um, you know, I think there is something there that you should also explore because I'm, I'm sure they will like, especially if you take some of the people, you know, and the chef and everything mm -hmm. and you convert this into, you know, an event. Um, and so we, we, you know, collectively, we keep discovering the, um, the, this amazing uh, cuisine. Um, uh, Selena, um, what about you? I mean, what, what, you know, have you shown the film in, uh, I believe you haven't yet in El Salvador. Um, what do you expect? What are you planning? Um, well, this is our first uh, year. Um, well, we had the national premiere in the Tempo Film Festival in Sweden. And now with you in Seattle is the international uh, premiere. Um, and um, in this month, we have actually three festivals. The next festival is uh, Movies That Matter. It's a festival in, in Holland, and it's about uh, also uh, about the activists. And we have many uh, meetings that we have arranged so uh, Teodora can meet more people, so we can also help this cause. So I'm really happy and excited about this. Uh, and then the next festival will be uh, hot dogs. Uh, so we're really happy also about hot dogs. And uh, I think in May we have also two other festivals, but I think I cannot say it yet. But uh, we are um, with all the festivals, we are working with the impact campaign. Uh, so also Amnesty International has been a, a great ally. So we are planning to do webinars and digital activities and, and uh, yes, and well, we're waiting for answers for, for more uh, festivals in Latin America. Of course, I, I would love to go to each uh, place and, but uh, yeah, unfortunately it's not possible, but you know, in digital form, uh, I will be uh, present. And also Teodora will be present. So I'm really looking forward for this. And, and I think maybe at the end of the year, we will be able to, to show the film in El Salvador. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward for, for this because uh, it, it, uh, the abortion issue, it's really a delicate, uh, sensitive subject. 
And El Salvador is really Catholic and evangelical, so uh, and conservative. So I, there will be I think many different uh, opinions, but I ho I hope that this will contribute to the dialogue to open up uh, and talk about that it's a, a human right and uh, that has nothing to do with religious and uh, that it's uh, our body and our choice and. And yes, uh, I, I hope we contribute also to this struggle and, and, and someday uh, that the 17 women uh, regain their freedom. So yes, we have, we have many plans uh, with the film and, and yes, we're now waiting for all the responses. And for the future, uh, for me, um, well, I'm working in, in different projects. Uh, they are about women and the one project is about a guerrilla fighter and a poet from El Salvador. And then I have other, uh, another project that it's more like a, an experimental project that I'm doing with the footage that I filmed uh, some years ago. So yes, I'm doing different kind of things and, and collaborating. Really quickly, uh, yes. any update on the other 16 women? Um, has any of them been able to get out of jail, of prison, um, after you finish your film? Yes, after Teodora regained uh, her freedom, uh, nine other women uh, got released. They uh, got released uh, thanks to all the, the fight with the human rights lawyers. And they commuted their sentence, so they, it was just a sentence uh, reduction. So in front of the system, they're still guilty. But now they are free and then they are now, uh, you know, starting their life outside prison. But because, uh, but six other women got into the jail. So the situation, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, abortion is still criminalized. And these women, even if they have a miscarriage, they sentence them to 30 years of prison. Um, so the situation keeps going, uh, the violence is keeping going against women and against girls. Uh, so it's, uh, yet yeah, this is uh, what I have to say is that it's uh, the, this uh, institutional violence, state violence, police violence and obstetrical violence, sexual violence, they, they have to, they survived all this. And so, but uh, yeah, we're, we're trying also to talk about uh, the situation uh, and this issue because also in El Salvador is no sexual education. So that's, uh, it's a really long process we have, to, we are taking. So we don't have to, we are in this process of not only decriminalize abortion, but in the law, but also in people's minds. And this is a really a, a longer cultural process um, so yes, so we are uh, with different kind of ways uh, we, we are uh, contributing to this uh, through art, through cinema, uh, to many, many ways. So yes, it's a long struggle. Um, but uh, yes, we have, uh, we have now many, many allies also that uh, are working together with us. So yes, I, I hope one day we will have uh, autonomy over our bodies and one day uh, the women will be free. Thank you. Uh, um, Carolina, what about um, the, the film? Has, has it been shown in Costa Rica? No, that, that's very important. We are working on that now. Um, the film has been where it was released at ITPA uh, um, in November 2020. And now we are like doing this festival path and we are waiting for some answers. There are some festivals we cannot say still, but that we are going to be. So we are very happy there is still, even if there is this pandemic, we can still connect with the, the audience <laughs> in this virtual way. And then we want to do like this, um, also all the stones and the, these indigenous populations that are linked to them. They lived in the south of the country and all the, the places where we shot um, we want to do also like this more, um, we would like to have this thing, your eco cinema you were uh, talking about, we don't have that this, but maybe we will still connect or find the way to, 
to do some like a community presentation of the film with the people that work with us in, in those archaeological sites. It's like very important to return, as, as you say, to, to the people and to can to speak with them, also to bring the archaeologists, you know, and to, to all reflect on, on those topics with the people. So that's important. And um, for the next um, project I'm working, well, I'm, I'm like working with this a friend that she's like a theater director and she works with uh, women. Like I'm, I'm so interested by Selena's work also because they, she works with women that are in prison, not related to abortion, but uh, she works with, uh, there is only one like prison here in Costa Rica for women. So she, she has been working with them through, through theater like um, constructing with them scripts and making plays and it's very very interesting the work she she does with these women so i'm now like um following them follow the the crew of the women some of their some of them are out of prison and some of them are still in prison and some are like casa por cárcel like they because of the pandemic they let them go out of prison where they are at their home and like in lockdown mm -hmm. and they are like working on a on a on a script for a play about the lockdown you know and the lockdown they lived in prison so like to do this this game about the lockdown we are living now and how they mm -hmm. they are like these um experts on about lockdown you know <laughs> so they are like building a story around that and i'm following this process and we will see where, where it leads us. <laughs> so, um, I mean, wow, it's already, you know, uh, three o'clock. We, um, I think we, you know, I'm sure there is a lot more questions. Um, I, I'm sure maybe you have questions for each other, uh, but um, you know, you are connected. So if you have specific questions, please make sure that uh, you connect uh, afterwards. Uh, the only thing I can say is thank you for, um, you know, being part of this roundtable, but for letting us having your films, for making the films that you made. Um, Seattle and SIF, of course, is going to be somehow a home for you for the future. So I'm sure we will hear about you and your other projects. Um, all the luck uh, with everybody's um, plans. And I don't know if you want to say something like, you know, three last words, just saying bye, because we need to wrap up. So I'm going to start with um, um, Carolina, since you were the last, like, you know, three words to uh, say, you know, goodbye. Yeah, no, um, thank you very much. And really thank you also for the films that you, you make, uh, you made, you're going to still making films and that's wonderful. So I hope you will still going to work all these creative ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Selina. Um, thank you very much uh, for having me here. It was amazing to share the space with other great filmmakers and I hope I can see your films. Uh, and yes, uh, let's keep in touch. And thank you very much, Hebe, for everything. Thank you. Pablo. Oh, well, I'm going to thank a lot of all of you for, for this opportunity. And I'm, I'm honored to be here with, with these three great uh, filmmakers. Nuria, we're living with you. Thank you, Hebe, Beth, and all the festival. And I'm also honored. I haven't had the opportunity yet to see all your films, but I've watched all your trailers. And I really felt honored to be here sharing with you that are great filmmakers. I really hope to watch your films. I will write you to ask for the links. <laughs> thank you again. And thank you, everybody. And keep watching films. There is a lot more SIF um, to enjoy. Thank you.